Hey y'all, insight number two, we're in 2nd Nephi 31, this is verses 17 through 21. Um, and of course, being a Star Wars fan, loving Mandalorian, uh, this is the scripture for us all. Uh, verse 21, categorically states, this is the way. The gospel, this is the way. Now, if you're not a Star Wars fan, Mandalorian has a religion, it's a group of people, but it's also a religion, and they live it very, very specifically and straight and keep to those precepts. It's what keeps them alive, it what what's, gives them respect and that brotherhood and everything. Um, so, different than living the gospel, yes, but still a lot of similar themes in there, and the fact that this is the way... Um, you know, and it reminds me of other things in scriptures too and, and church things where there's questions about is there no other way? And, you know, Christ asked if there was another way when he was suffering. Um, Eve asked if there's another way. And, oh, I see that this is the way now. And, you know, maybe not in those words, but a similar sentiment. Um, you know, that there's, there's multiple examples throughout scripture and church history where people have asked, is there another way? And the answer is, this is the way. The gospel is the way. And um, sadly, for whatever reason, sometimes those things are really hard um, emotionally, but it is still the way. Uh, now, don't confuse that with things that are not commandments. You don't need to cut people out of your life because they've chosen something else. No, that's not the way. The way of Christ is to love God and love others. Um and in doing that, sometimes things aren't so great. But that's the way. That's the way of the gospel. So he talks about this in these verses, about what is the pathway to Christ, to eternal life, to exaltation. Not just salvation, but exaltation. And it starts with baptism. But it's the doctrine of Christ. It starts with faith. And then you have repentance. And then you start making covenants. The first ones you make are baptism covenants. And then you get the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you're thinking, does that sound familiar? Well, yes, it does. It's the fourth article of faith. So there's faith, repentance. Those are the actions you do. Then you take covenants. And then you get a gift of the Holy Ghost. So this, that is the way. That is the starting place. That is finding the straight gate by which they talk about here. Now, straight isn't straight as in a line that's straight. Straight is in a narrow pathway, as in it's hard to find, and it's not open to a lot of interpretation. It's very much a, these are the commandments, these are the things, and, you know, you don't need to understand it all right now, but I'm doing, this is, this is for your good. This is a reason why it's like this. And that's, all, that's again, where we come in and complicate it because we want it a different way, or we're not feeling it at the time, or we want to know more, and we're just not ready for that understanding yet. So it's that matter of that faith has to trump those questions and keep in that straight way. It's a, it's a long discussion we could have, but I would rather you go, guys have a look at this and find your own answers and where you sit with this right now. I'm not going to tell you what's going to be the best for you. You know what's best for you. That's up to you to pray to Heavenly Father and work with Jesus Christ and listen to the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, if you want to call it that. Same same guy. Um and, and figure what's out and, and get that feeling for you. Find those answers for you. I can't tell you that. I know for me, I don't know for you. It's an individual thing. But indeed, it's still the way. So let's have a look. Um, so in 17, he's like, Wherefore, do the things which I have told you that I have seen the Lord your Redeemer should do, uh, that you might know the gate by which you should enter. So not only teach behavior, but teach saviour. And they go together. Uh, it talks about that more. The whole thing, 17 through 21, talks about that. But if you're going to teach behavior for baptism, you need to teach Jesus. And teaching Jesus will bring behavior. They are a cyclical relationship. A cyclical relationship, sorry. They go together. You, you really can't have one without the other. They're going to fail. You can teach Jesus all you like. If you don't teach behavior, then it's, they're missing the point. And if you teach behavior and leave Jesus out of it, then it's just a bunch of tickless things and black and white rules, and that, that is never going to work either. Um, that's akin to slavery, um, which a lot of people think is what Christianity is, but it's not, because we have every choice in everything we do, and it's about relationship, not slavery. And you can't have relationship and faith without Jesus, and you can't have a relationship with Jesus without acting in a way that you are with him and that you're his friend. Um, you know, you get it? Okay. So anyway, so that's that's talking there. 19 talks about um, 
I know now that you've gotten into the straight and narrow path, like for most of us that are going to even crack the scriptures and do come follow me, we're pretty much already baptized and we're on that straight path. So is that it? Do we do, do we need more? Ah, yes, we do. Um, he said, you've got onto the straight path. I would ask if this is all, you know, you've done. Is this all? Is this done? Are we are finished? He says, behold, I say unto you, nay, for ye have not come thus far, save it were by the word of Christ with unshaken faith in him, relying wholly upon the merits of him who is mighty to save. And that line is incredible. The only reason we get anywhere in this life is relying on Christ, the one who actually has strength to save us. So remember that, that any like growth we have, any um, improvement in our character and our becoming is because of Jesus. So he says in 20, and, and this is beautiful, and it used to be a scripture mastery. Don't know if it still is. It says, wherefore, you must press forward with a steadfastness in Christ, having a perfect brightness of hope and a love of God and of all man, men, and again, mankind. Wherefore, if you shall press forward, feasting upon the word of Christ, and endure to the end, behold, thus saith the Father, you shall have eternal life. So again, there's salvation, but there's also exaltation talk in there. Um, and it's, you know, and, and verse 20, when you must press forward, as in all the times, and all the mess, all the clean times, the confusing times, the ugly times, the annoying times, all the times. Um press forward so church doctrine can be learned by the individual make sure it's jesus and scriptures they go together faith and jesus behavior and jesus go together um straight gate narrow path if you find this how did you find it how did you find it you grew up in the church you're a convert how'd you find it let us know how'd you find that and how are you helping guide others to the same place All right um just find the path no press forward now, the last but I like here is this perfect brightness of hope. Did he say perfect brightness of what? Knowledge? Perfection? No. Hope. It's not perfect brightness of things that we can't have. It's a perfect brightness of hope. Can hope be perfected? Absolutely it can be in this life. Can we be perfected in this life? That happens in the next life. Can we perfect a lot of things in this life? There's always going to be little things that are off. Um, that are unbalanced, that are not quite as even as they could be. Like it's it's fairly equal and opposite force. We know that scientifically there's, you know, equal and opposite reactions will cause the thing in the middle that we all enjoy. Um, you know, we need gravity to keep the sky where it is and to have oxygen to breathe, all those kind of things that I did not go to school long enough to understand fully. However, however, we can have a perfect brightness of hope. That is one thing we can have. Um, we don't need to have perfect knowledge. We don't need to have perfect um, reactions or, um, yeah, a lot of things. But we can have perfect brightness of hope. And feast, endure. Um, feast upon the word of Christ and endure to the end. Now, endure is to have strength and firmness within you. Um, it doesn't mean that you just white knuckle it and hang on for dear life and get through it there's a way to do it with some grace and some learning and you know a lot of the times sometimes you really do just need to hold on for dear life for a little bit and then you're like okay I'm, I'm getting better at this particular roller coaster I can do this a little more confidently and you grow into that uh, actual endurance of what I mean there um but yeah in 21 and now behold my beloved brethren this is the way and there is none other way nor name given under heaven whereby man can be saved in the kingdom of God um and this is the doctrine of Christ. Again, teach behavior, but teach savior. If you're going to teach savior, behavior comes. Make sure they're in there. Don't just teach one without the other. Please, people. Um, so there you go. This is the way. The way of Christ. The gospel of Christ. This is it. There you go. Enjoy that. Um, hang around. We're going to go and look uh, in chapter 32, verses 1 to 3 and verse 9. Because it talks about what to do once you've found the way. It's good advice too. I'll see you there.